once again my dear colleague has decided to put the buzzkill on the religious festivities of mainline Christian denominations, most notably the Catholics. While his scholarship in the Old Testament, the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jasher, and the Book of Jubilees is unparalleled and, and absolutely excellent, when he turns his research towards Catholics, his scholarship goes in the toilet. This time, my colleague has decided to turn his attack on Easter, claiming that Easter is equated with Ishtar worship because the two words sound alike. Moreover, I don't know how five Old Testament readings concerning salvation history followed by the gospel reading of the resurrection account amid hymns of praise and rejoicing could somehow be associated with Ishtar. Apparently he claims that Ishtar's worship is associated with an, a rabbit and eggs, but I did a little research and apparently there was nothing associated with Ishtar worship that happened around the equinox, the vernal equinox, which is the time of Easter. And moreover, uh, her symbol was not a rabbit or an egg. Her symbol was a lion and a scimitar and a scepter. And she was also associated with a scorpion. So these things seem to have nothing to do with Easter. So let's start with the Easter egg. Where does the Easter egg come from? Well, the Easter egg is incredibly ancient. It goes back to the Persian Empire and their religion of Zoroastrianism, which was actually the religion of the three kings who came to visit Jesus at his birth. Um, it is a practice, it, they have a festival called Nowruz. One of the traditions of the ancient festival of Nowruz was to decorate brightly colored eggs and display them on the table. They believed that the, the first thing you ate at Nowruz should be an egg to ensure good fortune. Because the ancient Persians believed in a flat earth, they believed that the earth that was carried about through the oceans on the horn of a giant bullfish and at Nauru's, the bullfish would transfer the earth to his other horn. So they would put a plain white egg in front of a mirror on, on Nauru's, and they would watch it carefully to see if it moved or rolled as the bullfish was supposedly transferring the earth from one horn to the other. The association of eggs at the vernal equinox spread throughout the entire Persian Empire. And when the Christians came around, they adopted the egg in the early Christian churches in Egypt and Greece. The early Greek and Egyptian Christians would color the eggs bright red in honor of the shed blood of Jesus Christ and decorate the eggs with a cross. And they said that the cracking open of the eggs was like the opening of the tomb and to find nothing in the middle except egg, I guess. So, um, and a lot of times they'll play these little cracking games at Easter time in, in Greek families. And these uh, bright red eggs were uh, common throughout Greece, Egypt, the Middle East, and parts of Eastern Europe. So, the Easter egg starting in Persia traveled all across the Middle East and Europe without having it even a whiff of a possibility of being associated with Ishtar. So is Easter, the worship of Ishtar, simply because it sounds like Easter, Ishtar, the two words sound alike? Well, let's look at that. If we look at the various names for Easter, as we go across Europe, we will see that normally it's a word that's associated with Pash or Pesach or Passover. This holds true as we go through the Balkans and also in Southern Europe and along the Mediterranean. 
ending northern Europe and around the Baltic Sea, until finally in Germany and England we have the names of Oster and Easter. So, did Ishtar worship make this huge high jump over almost all of Europe only to land in Germany and England? Not really. Ostara was a minor Germanic goddess who uh, was the goddess of spring. Her name in Anglo-Saxon was the Eostre. And she, there's not much known about her worship except that a rabbit used to run in front of her and her worship may have involved processions with flowers and greenery. But as again, not much is known about her worship. Um, once the Christians arrived in Germany and England, uh, her her worship of Eostra or, or Ostara died out, but her name remained in the month of Ostara Monoth in Germany or Eostra Monoth in Anglo-Saxon, much in the way that we have the Roman god Janus in our month for January. So the Easter Bunny is associated with the rabbit that ran before the goddess Eoster or Eostara, but since her worship died out centuries ago, how did the Easter Bunny become associated with Easter in modern times? Well, in 17th century Lutheran Germany, there seemed to be a revival of this uh, the bunny, at least, in East, in, associated with Eoster or Ostara. And the Germans would uh, hide eggs and sweets for their children and say that the Easter bunny, or Osterhasen, as they call it in Germany, has left them presents on Easter. So this is how the Easter bunny tradition got started in Germany. It wasn't really common in England, but after uh, Queen Victoria uh, married Prince Albert, uh, he brought the uh, Easter bunny tradition with him from Germany, as he did the Christmas tree. So then the Easter bunny got popular in England, and it was also popular in America because there were a lot of colonial Germans who had this Osterhase tradition of the Easter bunny. Um, so that's where the Easter Bunny comes from and how we got rabbits and eggs associated with Easter. So where did this association between Ishtar and Easter come from? Well, it's a fairly recent development. Perhaps you've seen this meme being circulated about the internet on Facebook and other social media. Well, I did a little research into the history of this meme and found some things that were really interesting. The meme was originally posted on the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science Facebook page as a means of ridiculing or poking fun at Christians. The actual picture is the Bernie relief from the uh, British Museum. It's also called the Queen of Night Relief. Uh, it is not known that it's a carving of Ishtar. They think it may be her goddess sister Arishkiel, who was the queen of the underworld. This uh, meme was posted on the uh, Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science Facebook page on May 27th of 2013, and many of the rational atheists were very annoyed about this post, saying it was full of all kinds of inaccuracies. Much to the surprise of the atheist community, various um, uh, fundamentalist denominations who uh, do not believe in the practice of Easter or Christmas or any of these other holidays uh, picked up the uh, meme and started circulating it around the internet uh, as a way of attacking Catholics and other mainstream uh, denominations such as Lutherans and others that celebrate Christmas and Easter. And this has been circulating for since 2013 over and over again. So this current attack on the celebration of Easter by various fundamentalist groups 
is based on a meme created by a rabidly atheist group. I would submit that before you start attacking people who are Christians and say that what they're doing is pagan or, or you know, uh, um, evil practice, you might check out and see who you're standing next to while you're claiming this. And next time, uh, try not to uh, jump to conclusions until you've done your research properly. Um, and especially when you're sort of filling the role of the accuser of the brethren per Revelations 12.10. Anyway, all us Catholics, Lutherans, Methodists, Presbyterians are all going to be celebrating Christmas and Easter and all the other holidays of the Christian calendar. And just remember whose side you're standing on while you rail at us about it. Thank you. That is all.